around that like price. Better like ones, a lot yeah. better. Yeah, more high, heavy. Well, maybe that one's nice because it's light. I don't know. Mm. Mm. Who the frick knows? What's up, ghosties? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are live. <laughs> And by live, I mean not live. Uh, we're back, though. And you know what I've always said is, man, I wish I was uh, featured on a Dave Ramsey podcast, but I never have been. <laughs> Jake, Brad, have you? It's funny you say that, because as, uh, as of this week, I made it. I didn't even know it was the Dave Ramsey show or the you know Dave Ramsey podcast, but yeah. I told you, I was like, I'm, I, I'm on something called the Ramsey show. Like, Dave Ramsey. Yeah. Time, the Ramsey time and do the voice. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dave Ramsey Show. <laughs> I'll, I'll never do it the, right again. The welcome back wasn't great, but the Dave Ramsey Show was pretty good. The one that, like the drop off yeah. on the show. Oh, do you know? Do you know what he says whenever you say, "Hey, Dave, how you doing?" What does he say? Better than I deserve. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Better than I deserve. What's up? Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know what the frick you guys are talking about. I've never seen this guy. I've never seen this show, but. Um, some of uh, someone from Stratford today mm -hmm. posted on Facebook. Jake Triplett made the Ramsey show. Good job, Jake. All right. And they posted this screenshot of me on there, uh, but I haven't watched it because it was only a screenshot, so I couldn't even find it. Mm -hmm. But we just scrubbed for the last hour and a half, and we did find <laughs> it. So this better freaking be worth it. Um, but also, the first comment on this Facebook post is from someone who says, "We just saw him last night at a concert in Kansas City. How fun!" Was it uh, Michael? It was Michael's wife. No way! Yeah, it was Michael's wife. Oh, <laughs> yeah. dude, I told Michael that we had a podcast. I, I, I think I could be friends with Michael in real life. So I hope Michael listens to this. Michael. And, and then we become friends. And uh, Millie. Is Millie. That name? Yeah, I wrote it down. Michael Millie. They seem cool. Seems so cool. She's a 12 year old at a concert. In I Kansas hope City. they're friggin' listening. He's a pastor in Springfield. <laughs> if you need a church, go to Michael's church. Wow. It was Fun. called Rockstone or Fluent Life or I don't know. <laughs> something. <laughs> something. <laughs> something churchy. <laughs> I like, remember it. I remember it. He it was told like him. it was like the threshold or like <laughs> <laughs> crossing br bridges. Yeah, yeah, Bridgestone. Yeah, look it up. Ah, that's a that's a car tire place. Dang it. Golf ball. Also, <laughs> let's listen oh, yeah. to the clip. I, I none of us have seen this. Um, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen this. So let's see what they said. Time. Can you introduce us to the show real quick one time? <laughs> 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 I, it's so, I literally don't you even it. know how it's actually uh, supposed to sound. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dave Ramsey show. <laughs> <laughs> the only the only thing you need to uh, fix is yes, the show. The, the Dave Ramsey show. Like it's not show. It's okay. show. Okay. Yeah, try again. The Dave Ramsey show. Yeah. No, no, I did it I did it wrong again. Welcome back to Dave. the Dave Ramsey show. Welcome back to the Dave Ramsey show. No, I, you're, yeah, you just just do it I your way. Know. You did a great. <laughs> I, <laughs> I haven't heard his voice in so long. I love it, dude. I'm gonna play the clip now. Yeah, a little bit. It's work right. You know, tough love, kind love. <laughs> um, and with that, I am told that there's something that we all need to see. And I'm trying to remember, James, if I've seen this video or not, or is this just gonna be a clean reaction? Rachel sent this to me, so I don't know if you've seen uh, it or not, but Rachel sent Rachel, it. Yeah, Rachel Coop sent it? I think it was just funny. I think it's like this comedian talking about uh, <laughs> mortgage rates and oh, mortgages. Oh, yes. Here, here, check it out. Mortgage right, rates. I've been paying my mortgage, but according to this, I haven't even made a dent. My original loan was two hundred forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I've been paying my mortgage for six months, and mm -hmm. I still owe two hundred thirty-nine thousand mm dollars. -hmm. <laughs> you see why that would piss me off? <laughs> so I bought a three hundred thousand dollar home. But in 30, this is gonna cost like $1.8 million. Is this escrow's fault? I don't know what that is still, so I, I just kind of blame it on that. That's fine, if you wanna blame it on escrow, you can. Okay, I hate that guy. <laughs> they say the rate is fixed. Do they call it that? Because it feels like I'm being neutered? Oh, oh gosh. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, got him! <laughs> that's funny. Because it is, is true. funny. It's just that's... how it feels when you're paying interest and you're just like, oh my gosh. Yeah, and I mean, I'll be honest, until you buy a house, I think there's so many unknown f fees and things that neutering oh, got her they got them <laughs> <laughs> that was funny they were vibing with Toe it in the line okay that's funny whoa okay no, hey, hey, whoa. i said clean reaction not <laughs> pg-13 reaction <laughs> uh, uh oh ooh i ooh i think this tight beat means that it's going down with some random thoughts and white meat too midwest best friends eating fast food on repeat so come along let's have some fun and go ahead get on your feet because it's the ghost from podcast that was great. That's good to see the mustache again, too. I know, dude. Do you ever miss it a little bit? 
Not that much. No. no, I don't miss it that much. I really enjoyed the way it felt when it was wet in the shower. No, I did not like. You what, didn't? Did we talk about this on the podcast? But when we went swimming for the bachelor party, yes, that was my first time being like soaking wet with a mustache. I did not enjoy how that felt. Oh wow! It felt like this is gonna sound dumb, but it felt like there was hair. Yeah, like on my mouth. <laughs> no it way! Felt like exactly like it was. Yeah, I just like I kept picking at it because it felt like a loose hair was like on me, and I was like, oh, I can't get any of this off. It's like I a thousand liked of them. It was like a little hug, a little hug. A little hug. We'll catapult on the lip. <laughs> anyway, that's kind of fun. Uh, Ramsey show. Yeah, dude. That's, cool. That's pretty fun. And the, the fact that like Rachel sent it to you or sent it to that girl. <laughs> Not that Rachel. Rachel Cruz. Rachel Cruz Ramsey. She She's Dave it. Ramsey's daughter. Oh. Yeah. Last name Cruz. Yes. Married, so, married Ted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, so Mar- she- married Ted and Tom's brother. <laughs> uh, She's his actual daughter. So Cruz is her middle name. No, her maiden her maiden name's Ramsey. She oh, got, she got married. So when you get married, a lot of times. So Rachel change, Ramsey Cruz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I said Cruz well, Ramsey. You're right. Yeah. Hey, confused. you're right. You're right. <laughs> um, either way, um, that was fun. Fun to see the people we ran into at the concert last night in the comments. The person yeah. who posted it responded back, "That's awesome. I'd like to see him perform sometime." And she was like, "No, no, we were just at the same concert <laughs> as him." Yes. Uh, but that's so fun. Love seeing people doing things past Springfield. Oh. <laughs> That's great. He's in Kansas now. <laughs> wow. He's really making it now. And then there's one last comment. That's funny. My boys love listening to his podcast. I didn't realize there was a connection there. Really? Well, the boys of Ben Forrester, shout out to you. Shout out. Thanks for listening. Unless it was correct opinions, then never mind. Do you think, oh yeah, do you think Malcolm Forrester? There's a Malcolm Forrester It's a listener. Really? Malcolm, if you're listening right now, is that you? Are you Ben's boy? <laughs> you Ben's boy. Hey, you Ben. Hey, you Ben's boy. Hey. I, I know your daddy. He wouldn't be approving of you being around here. You're, <laughs> you're going to get. All right. What was that? Go on and get. The word that we learned when I thought it meant if you were a real tall person. <laughs> buxom. Buxom. <laughs> buxom. You, you Ben's boy, you are awfully buxom. You Ben's buxom boy. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more of those if you want to. Uh, I don't know the uh, answer to it, but the term is hateful invectives from King of Queens. Oh, from Jerry Stiller. Yeah. Hateful invectives. Mm hmm. I think this is like when the when the government wants to like force you to do stuff, like wearing a seatbelt or a getting vaccinated. Invective. That is a hateful invective. So you know, uh, convection oven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it's the opposite. It's like it makes things cold. It's called an invective. invective. <laughs> but it's one that like is really hateful. Like, oh. like, oh, that was cold, man. That's a hateful invective. <laughs> that that's, was cold. Yeah, yeah. That makes pretty sense. confident okay. in that guess. I'm not gonna look it up. I think that's the answer. Really? Both those things together. It's a government. It's something that's cold from the government. <laughs> like in the projects. Sure. It, of Michigan, though, like where it's cold. <laughs> the government has access to, to like these especially cold invectives. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Special. Um, anyway, we were kind of talking about it. We were at a concert last night. Yeah, dude. How What'd was it think? for you? Oh, it was uh, good. It was, it, it, I was, I wasn't running on fumes. That's way too extreme, but I was tired. And I mean, I, this is coming off of the Florida trip, coming off of driving home. From Dallas, basically. Yeah, so we got home. We got to Dallas um, from the Florida trip. Stayed up pretty late, telling uh, Catherine's parents all about the trip. Cool. You know, it was just so fun. Bragging on Brooks, you know, because that's their son, obviously. Bragging on Catherine, t- telling all about it. And then, yeah, went to bed at like midnight. Woke up not super early, but left by eight thirty. And yeah, got home at four forty-five. Left for the left for dinner at like five twenty, I think. Gosh. And so like yeah, literally, you know, from the time we got home, we were unloading, doing all this stuff. My parents came, left, um, and yeah. So I was. It was just a long day. And so as as we were getting ready, I told Catherine, I was like, and it was one of those things where I was kind of trying to like enable her, but really in my head, I was like passive aggressively like, hey, we don't have to stay for this whole concert if you don't want to. Yeah. Just 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 want to throw that out there in case you're like really tired by the time it's over, you know. Um, but we it was Wilder Woods, um, which is the Need to Breathe lead singer Bear Reinhardt's you know kind of side project. Maybe it's his full time thing. I don't know what he's what it's what do you, what do you define it as? But um, and we didn't know the song super well. And so it's an interesting thing to go to a concert of somebody who's really, really, really good and a great performer, but you don't know the song super well. <laughs> and so you're kind of vibing with it, but you're not like anticipating anything. You know what I mean? Like you're not like, oh, here comes this great bridge or they're going to cut yeah. it out at this point. It's just like, this is good. This is fun. And there was one song, like it started and I was like, whoa, this song sounds so much like Get Back by the Beatles. 
And then it was Get Back by the Beatles. They, they like covered it. <laughs> but it was like, I didn't even know their repertoire. I didn't know their songs enough to even know, like, I guess they just did something similar to Get Back here. Um, but yeah, overall, it was a, a blast. I, I just, Catherine and I talked about how fun our friends are. And I know that we know that, but it's just always fun to like acknowledge it later. Like it was just, it was a great five, five friend, five couple friend group of you, you and me, Harrison, Gunner, Peter, and our wives, um, fiance, fiancés. And yeah, everyone was so fun. It, it like different parts of the night. People were hilarious. You know, Abby was hilarious at one point. Gunner was being fun. It was just like, yeah, it was fun. So it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, Rachel and I's first dance is going to be to one of his songs. Yes. And didn't know if he would play it, and he did. Yeah, Heavenly Light, right? Heavenly Light. That's a fun one. There, there were a few, there, like I sat or stood next to you for the beginning of the concert, and we kind of intermingled eventually with our ladies. At first, the ladies were up front talking pretty loudly during the uh, <laughs> solo opener. Yeah, the poor uh, opener. <laughs> it was just him and a guitar, pretty toned down Very set. toned down. Yeah, like he, very quiet. Even in between songs, he would just kind of like, just kind of be quiet for a few seconds. Pretty low energy. Yeah. I'd say if I could critique him, yeah. have more energy performing. Yeah, I think he was kind of going for that vibe of like, man, just like, Oh, I'm just going to command the room. But it's like, you're the opener. You can't command the room yet. Yeah, because you don't have the respect yet. Right. Like Bear, at the end of the night, came and just did a song completely unplugged in the middle of the floor. That was super cool. That was cool because he commanded, you know, he had respect. I don't know if I've ever been that close to someone that talented doing their talent. Mm. You know, it's like I've been, sure. I've sh you know, been with people who yeah. maybe do other things, but I've never got yeah. to see them do their thing. Yeah. That close. That was fun. It was cool. He, yeah, that that concert venue is the Madrid Theater, which I'd never been to. It was a perfect size. That's my favorite size venue. Shout out, Brad. Because oh I Googled it. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yeah. I feel like anytime I'm in a theater now, just I'm always just curious. Like, you know, yeah. we've been performing all day. He's like, how many does it hold? And so I Google it. And then I quiz Brad. I'm like, all right, Brad, how many does this place hold sitting and how much does it hold standing? Mm hmm. And Brad's like, dude, you know I'm awful at stuff like this. We played that Wits and Wagers game like a couple weeks ago with Brad Grant ended up Moore. with zero points. So bad at, at <laughs> estimating things like that. Brad's like, I don't know. Maybe you're like, gonna make fun of me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what? A, yeah. I mean, you did take it seriously though. You did kind of look. around. I tried to and, think about it. Yeah. Because there's a balcony up there. Maybe like 800 standing. And I was like, dude, that's exactly right. Yeah. I said 800 standing, 450 sitting, and you're like 800 standing, 500 sitting. I think is what you well said. Well done. So. Very, very impressive. Thank you. Um, so yeah, just a nice mid mid sized theater. Because awesome. I, I, like dive bars and stuff like that are fun to see people. I've seen some like pretty up and coming people at really small bars, but the energy of a venue that has a little more people in it is great. Yeah. But yet you can still do stuff like he did last night, where he just came in the middle, completely unplugged, and everyone could hear. It. It's just fun. That's, yeah. that's the best size. I think that's what I said to you or to Rachel. I was like, I like that he's taking advantage of the size theaters he's right. doing. Because if he's with him to breathe, the theaters are four times as big probably. Yeah. But in this size, he's like, I'm gonna go out there and yeah. do what you can't do. Right in the bigger ones, so and that's what I've seen. Need to breathe at smaller theaters back before they were at doing the big ones, and that's fun too. Like it's just yeah. fun to be in those things. So it was just fun. I just haven't been to concerts I that much in yeah. my life, especially recently. It's just fun to see someone who is really good at performing, like yeah. the performance aspect of it. His voice is incredible, and it was just it was fun. And also just like seeing someone perform in a theater two days before I'm about to go and perform in a theater, it was kind of inspiring. Was yeah, like, I was yeah, going to say, does it fun. get you every time? I didn't know yeah. if like as a non-musical person, but as a performer, if concerts get you going. Every time I'm at a concert, I I leave being like, how can I become a musician? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> every time. I can't help. I mean, that's why I started the podcast. I was listening to podcasts like, I need to do this. Mm -hmm. But music, they're a little bigger barrier entry than just <laughs> buying a microphone and starting a podcast. I mean, um, yeah, you can do it though. Just buy a you know quarter inch, and plug yeah, in. we've got the equipment. Uh -huh. I've got a music producer friend. I I will do it at some point. I know yeah. I always say that, but I will. Every time I go to a concert, I like I'm like I gotta write more songs. I, I have to. Point. Yeah, because yeah. I can play and I can sing, but I cannot. I'm not a good writer. I cannot do that aspect. Yeah. Of, especially the lyrics. I can do the music okay, but if anybody has lyrics that you don't have a song for yet, send them my way and I'll try to write something for you. It sounds like maybe you and I should just maybe team so, up. Yeah. I'm like, I can do the lyrics, <laughs> but I am yeah. helpless when it comes to creating yeah. you know, that type of songwriting, the like, other half. Every time I try to write a song, it's like, it's it's either like it's 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 just so obvious what I'm trying to say. You know what I mean? Like it's like an, you're a little too on the nose. Exactly. Yeah. Like it's like like this guy last night. He's like, so this song's about you know <laughs> when I, I I was adopted in Greece and this is the last time we were at the beach before we went to America. Um, 
and so this is the song called Knee Deep. And I'm like, I would have never understood that if you didn't explain it. Whereas me, I'd be like, sitting on the beach, about to leave. <laughs> yeah. It's my last day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adopted in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Heading to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I think I know what this guy's talking about. You, know? uh, you guys are going to enjoy this one. It's called Last Day on the Beach before I head to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, but it was it was a blast of a time, man. I'm, I'm glad. Like, like, we bought the tickets not realizing what day it was. Like, like Catherine's like, oh, yeah, by the way, that's the day that we come back from Texas. We're going to have to leave earlier than normal, all this stuff. And I was expecting her to be like, no, let's not, let's not go. Like, let's not make it or let's see what happens. And yeah, she was committed. We both, n- neither of us regret it. It's just so fun. It was I thought Catherine had a ton of energy last night. She was great. Yeah, she did awesome. She was, she, she was really fun at the beach too. I think she had some fun energy at the beach. I don't know if we yeah. talked about that much on the podcast. Vacation. The first, yeah. Like vacation, Catherine, like when we got there, it was just, cause like, I feel like for Dads, I can compartmentalize so quickly. Like, I'm not thinking about my kids at all right now. Yeah. No, like, no offense to my kids. I love them. But, like, she's always, like, even if she's in town and she's on a date or something, I think she's thinking, like, well, I got laundry at home. I got whatever. X, Y, Z, all these different tasks and things to worry about. Vacation, Catherine? Not thinking about it at all. Yeah. She got off the, the plane and she's like... Let's find a Mexican restaurant to eat at. We got, we got. I'm, I'm feeling Mexican. <laughs> she ordered you know, like the biggest fajita, you know, dish you can get. She was so fun. She was uh, driving, or I was driving, but she had her head out the window of the minivan, just yeah. feeling the weather. She was like a dog. Sun. Did we talk about shoot? Did we no. Talk? Oh yeah. So we were just driving through the area that our uh, house was going to be at, and we see this cool coffee shop. What was it called? The Bamboo Bean? Beachy Bean? Beachy Bean. And we're like. Oh, you know, that looks nice. You talk about how like girls love reading stuff. Beachy oh, bean, beachy coffee bean, coffee? beachy, and like we're all just vibing on Florida, and and Catherine's just like, oh, beachy bean show, oh show, show. <laughs> oh beachy bean show. <laughs> and we all just start dying laughing at that. Like, Whoa, oh show, <laughs> yeah. Like who is this girl? Um, <laughs> it was fun though. So anyway, yeah, it was it was a blast, man. Concerts are fun. I I. Uh, less last night more on the trip uh at the cruise that we had there was that acoustic guitar player that just played covers all night and he was so fun his name was jeff i think jeff and i I said to Catherine, i was like i want to do this for one night i don't want to have like a job doing this but i would really like the opportunity to just play covers for one night so if anybody out there is like hey brad we're having some event and we just need some background music holler at me and i would love to just like just me and my guitar he did some like you know hip hop covers. I think Kendrick was probably in there somewhere. <laughs> um, you know whatever. Just like he took requests. I think that's so fun. Is twenty twenty three the year we become musicians? It might be twenty twenty three is it's four uh, yeah, four yeah. months over. Yeah, it's pretty full. Um, but maybe 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 let's not let's just not close maybe. the book on it yet. Yeah, but just say we'll say maybe. <laughs> I'll talk to Zane. Yeah, I'll see what he thinks. <laughs> yeah, dude, shout out Zane. The last time I talked to him when we were like chatting music and stuff, because he was like, yeah, I want to help with jean shorts. And I was like, just like, how much would it cost for like a song or, you know, how much would it, how long would it take you for like the music to a song or whatever? And he's like, well, it depends on what you're thinking. And so I kind of threw, I was like, okay, for instance, like a, like a Christian little dicky. And he was like, do I could do that in my sleep? I was like, oh, okay. So what I'm asking <laughs> is pretty elementary then. He's like, yeah, yeah, that's no problem. What does like, he oh, mean great. by that? Like what, what, what would make it harder than you think? I mean, he does like a lot of like scoring and like oh, soundtrack I stuff. See. Like, I think he does very just like so like a hundred instruments on a track. Kind of yeah, thing. yeah. I yeah. think a ton of sure. Just love. Uh, yeah, tracks I guess. levels. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Leveling, mastering, whatever. Huh. Yeah, and he's like, okay, yeah. Oh, you that? need five things in fake there? percussion. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can do that pretty. <laughs> I can easily. do an eight oh eight real quick for you, buddy. Yeah. Oh, cool. That'd be fun. So I, I told him, I was like, I expect you to have this by tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> do it in your sleep, then, <laughs> if it's that easy. Do you think? Do you think he would like produce the track or like the the beat for you first and then you could learn it? Or is that what you're imagining? Yeah, I think so. And then I would ride around it. That's fun. Kind of like be so fun. Remember Tight Moon 2? <laughs> yeah. Dude, <laughs> Tight Moon 2 slapped. Tight <laughs> Moon, yeah, or, yeah, you have the I think I could pull it up. Dude, um Tight Moon 2 man <laughs> man <laughs> That's the rest of you can remember it. Then <laughs> yeah, dude, it was it was great and I think they just took like preset beats and just made their own ver- like lyrics and tune to them, didn't they? There's also a ton of just like yeah, there's like songs that like these freelance music producers will just say like, "Hey, here's a song, you use $60 and it's yours." Yeah. And kind of like the whatever that is the graphic design app, but for music. Oh, okay, cool. What's that called? The Je- Photoshop? No. 
<laughs> you idiot. It. No. <laughs> Whatever. You guys know. What's it called when you can like hire somebody to make like a graphic design for you? Oh, Fiverr? Yes. Oh. It's, it's probably more than graphic design, so everyone's rolling their eyes like, oh, this guy. <laughs> but yeah, Fiverr. Yeah. yeah. Okay, can you play some type? Sponsor the podcast? No, in my Dropbox from November 2015, I had this song. So to set it up, before you guys are expecting yeah, yeah, yeah. a lot. <laughs> no! Expect a, you guys are going to light. You're going to put it. You're gonna, <laughs> under promise. Under promise. Sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm too excited about this. <laughs> so this is my friend uh, Matt Kelly um, and Sherman Young, which I think we probably told maybe some stories on the podcast before. Like, they were the ones who did... Um, what is it? Uh, milk, uh, <laughs> milk boarding is what they called it. Yeah, milk boarding, where they tried to do the gallon challenge while wakeboarding, um, which is a very <laughs> funny video. I mean, it's just five minutes of them just throwing up milk while still wakeboarding. They made like a fake documentary. That's really funny. Um, other stories, I think. Well, what, whatever, it doesn't matter. They're just fun guys, camp guys, and while they're at Canacuck, they're like, "Hey, we are a, we're a rap group now called Tight Moon 2. I mean, none of it made any sense. I mean, you'd ask them like, "Why'd you come up with this?" and they give you some answer, uh, like they didn't under, you know. Whatever. Sounds like us, honestly. <laughs> yeah, they're but, not on Spotify anymore. Dang, good thing you got the Dropbox. Dang, we got to post this on our Patreon so people can like listen to the extended version. Oh yeah, if they want like the, yeah. the full one. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. This was my favorite one from back in the day. I don't think this one ever got to, to Spotify, so you're welcome. Because the one. lyrics weren't done. Whoa, that's huge, like the Sherman. Actually, huge, yo. Talking to you, dude. That whips all across the room. That's a pretty slick move. Where'd you learn that, dude? Off of YouTube, man with 300 million views. It's pretty tight, right? That means over 300 million guys got the same dance moves in the red with uh. 300 billion truly girls all across the world have seen this before and it's kind of a bore what you gotta do what the world needs more is somebody bump it on the dance floor breaking out moves never seen before yo now hold up right you want to nay nay because it caught your eye peeps on by my all the that's right good <laughs> can you play the other one that um, i like i think it's called type moon 2 okay i'll try to find it it's um, got a great beat to it I love that one. Just a song about dancing. Yeah. And I like it's a, you know, just making fun of a guy who's doing like <laughs> typical dance moves. Let's see if this is it. Is this sound right? <laughs> Not yet, but maybe this is a cool intro. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> How much did that cost? <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is one about tigers. <laughs> <laughs> um okay i'm gonna add that one to my playlist yeah that dude is. i'm telling you <laughs> i think uh, this one might be called i love tight moon too yes that's by, it by that's tight moon too. yes yes <laughs> dude <laughs> Brent, so oh, how did you ever uh like hear this <laughs> pause it real quick because i want to enjoy this um i <laughs> They came and hung out with us at the. They stayed with you at the K Life House one time. We all uh, went to Oklahoma Joe's. Fun. And like on the way back, <laughs> I don't think I volunteered or asked them. I think they were just like, "Hey, you want to hear our music?" <laughs> <laughs> and they like rapped along with it. Like it was like, it was like this ironic. Like I think they did know it's goofy, but at the same time, in their head a little bit, they're like, "This is pretty sweet." And they're just like vibing. I like that they weren't ever like ashamed of it. Like no. you don't have to. Don't put my videos no, guys, on around. No, no, no. Me. It it's was like, like hey, let's be let's, as into our. Give own me the stuff. ox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just this this little chorus right here is so good. Spinning all this money and we spinning all this cash. Slow, yeah, <laughs> what what cash day. are they spinning? <laughs> <laughs> they work at Canica. Gonna bring it right back. Wax. Wayne. Just talk about the moon. <laughs> I'm Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Wax and Wayne and I'm Bruce Wayne. Wax and Wayne. Wax and Wayne. My daddy's John Wayne. Just fun. Uh, that's fun. Peter's going to love that. They're K1 guys. I got to text them that they're in this podcast now. Yeah, dude. That's fun. Bring them on. Well, maybe we can have a live performance from Titan 2. Live Titan 2? That'd be sick. Oh, uh, they That'd were fun. Like, that would be sick, dude. Sherman was the one, maybe I told the story. He was, uh, he worked construction in Texas for a brief stint and, uh, 
was working with primarily Spanish-speaking men, and when he introduced himself as Sherman, they thought he said Fisherman, <laughs> and so they called him Pesque, which I guess is Spanish for Fisherman. And so he's like, yeah, they all call me Pesque. That's fun. <laughs> they think my name is Fisherman. Fisherman. <laughs> hey, what's your name? I'm a Fisherman. <laughs> what's your trade, sir? Construction worker. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Blacksmith. Yeah. That's great. So, like yeah, that. they call me Negro. Uh, <laughs> not great. That's great. Fisherman. Good guys. Good guys. Um well, that's kind of a fun start. Should we get into uh, the rest of the session? <laughs> yeah. The session? Why don't we call it a session? Session. Uh, but before we do that, we are brought to you by Carly Jean Los Angeles. Oh, Carly Jean. <laughs> Carly Jean Los Angeles. We love Carly Jean, and so do the ghosties, apparently. Um, the rest of this episode, you're going to hear from ghosties. We did a live voice memo mm-hmm. session with them. And uh, anyway, as part of... Uh, kind of the prizes uh, at the end of the the Florida trip, people could um, they could win different prizes that we picked out for them, mm-hmm. or they could choose from different gifts from our sponsors. Carly Jean was nice enough to give Ghosties three different hundred dollar gift cards, and boy, were they flying off the bed sheets! Oh my gosh, yeah. we didn't have shelves. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's, yeah. Where they, that's where they chose the the reward was from the bed sheets. From the, on top of the bed sheets, I think um, out of the. F- well, the first girl to choose chose the Kindle. Okay, that's fair. fair. But after that... Carly Jean. It was Carly Jean, Carly Jean, Carly Jean. Uh, Carly, yeah, triple jeans. Triple jeans. Yeah, triple layers. Uh, because, yeah, I think the, the ghosties out there recognize, hey, this is this is nice clothes. If I can oh get $100 for free, right. I'm going to do it. And I think the girls were like, oh, can I stack this on top of the promo code you already have? And I said, yeah. stack it, baby. And she said, yeah, the promo code GRKC for 20% off your entire <laughs> order? <laughs> yes. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, you I can. should have definitely said that. So what the, is the one-time use code? One time. Make it count. Hit it one time for Kylie Jean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're just they're just great. If you're yeah. a girl or know a girl, look into getting some clothes from Carly Jean Los Angeles. Wait a second, is Mother's Day coming up, Jacob? Holy freaking C. <laughs> yes. They asked us not is. to say crap. Yeah. Or or crud. No, I was gonna <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna say an awful word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time and just no, not during not during no, the no, average. No, not during no, the no, average. No, it would no, be, no. be a funny bleeped out thing. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway. Um but yeah. Mother's Day is coming up. Mothers love Carly Jean Los Angeles. And other moms or other women. And you out there probably love moms. Yes. <laughs> um, I know you're probably thinking, I don't need more clothes. But think about this. When you have clothing that you feel amazing in, you don't need to overflow your closets. 100%. Carly Jean is what's in your closet now. I don't know the exact term, but Catherine wears the same shirt from Carly Jean summer, winter, fall, spring. She just dis- does different things with it. It's called the Four the Seasons top. Resort. That's what it is. The yeah. Four Seasons Resort brought to you by Carly Jean Los Angeles. <laughs> That's right. At CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com. That's promo right. Promo code GRKC. And they're awesome. They continue to sponsor us. We want to sponsor them right back, baby. So buy some stuff from them. Take some pictures. Send it to us and say, uh, here's the thing I got from CarlyJeanLosAngeles.com. Promo code GRKC for 20% off. I want to wear it this summer and also the other three seasons. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love it. Genuinely. Let us know what you guys think of it because it's it's the greatest women's clothing I've ever seen. Just go get it, guys. Please. Just go get it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good deal. Thanks, Carly Jean. Um, okay, yeah, we're going to transplant, trans... We're tra- time travel. Time travel. Yeah. <laughs> time travel back in... <laughs> you didn't like me saying trans over and over again. I was like, hey, time travel! We're going to go back in time to... Uh, when we were in Florida, we had a house full of ghosties. Like, might as well utilize them. Mm-hmm. And so Might we as had well cry in front of them. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we got funny, we got fun, and we got sad. No, no not a sad. We got um, emotional, heartfelt, time travel, time travel. I'm just kidding. Time travel now. All right, Maddie. My name is Maddie. I'm from Pennsylvania. Um, I drove here, so it was really fun. Wow. Um, <laughs> How long of a drive is that? I was like nine hours one day, and then twelve hours the next day. Ooh. Wow, so it was Amazing. a road trip. Yeah, yeah. awesome. <laughs> Um, so yesterday was our only kind of day outside because of the rain, but in light of everyone having some pretty crazy sunburns, do you guys have any like funny stories of like one of your worst sunburns that you've had? Yes. That's I have a fun, one. fun question, Maddie. That's fun. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Maddie. Uh, yes, I have one. When I was in high school, I volunteered at youth front camps. And so I was, a they call it teed staff. So I was like, on um, yeah, just helping out you know, whatever, uh, had all these different responsibilities in one two week stretch. I was the assistant for the ATV guy. So I, I did like a, a TV, a, I was an ATV guy. <laughs> um, 
And so he would kind of like lead the group out and I would be the guy in the very back. And anyway, you just get crazy muddy and messy and stuff. And it was so much fun. Um, but I got mud like all over my arms and then I got sunburned. And so then, but it didn't, it didn't burn where the mud was. So then you take it off and it just looks like I have leprosy or something all over my arms. Um, and so, yeah, people are like, what in the world happened to that? You know, and you can't obviously come back from that very well. So mud burns funny. Yeah. Mine is probably just, uh, Gulf Shores in college one time. I just was wearing like shorter shorts or something and my knee pits got really burned and it was just miserable. Like oh, the back wow. of the knees. Yeah. Cause then every, every time you walk at all, like it gets irritated. And so, sure. Gotta spray the, the knee pits. Gotta go for the pits. Yeah. yeah. No mud involved though, but okay. thanks Maddie for the question. Sarah Flippo. Hello, this is Sarah Flippo. Uh, yes. I live in Idaho, currently in Florida. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know, what would it take if you wouldn't already want to spend a year in space? What would have to happen? Oh my gosh. Oh. What would have to happen? Yeah, maybe you don't want to spend a year like in space Like monetarily, right probably for me. I would, or I would even just like some... environmentally. Like okay, can I, can I ask some follow-up questions? <laughs> of course. Am I, do I get my, do my family get to come That's with That's what me? I'm wondering. Like, like what would it take? You, you need a family pod. You need a uh -huh. garden, a space garden. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. First and foremost. Space mailman. First and foremost, I have to get either. Well, I don't even know if I would do it for any amount of money not to be around my family for a year. Maybe like, but yeah. So I think first and foremost, family would have to be involved. All of them. Um, well, because you would have to draw the line somewhere. Like, I think Bo would do all right by himself. He's, <laughs> you should see the way he wields his stick. He loves sticks these days, and he, I think he could kill something with a stick if he had to. Um, Let's give him some practice. Yeah, exactly. Like, like instead of like feeding feast a snake a, a, a mice, like yeah. you feed Bo like a squirrel. And yeah, see if he can kill it. What happens? Yeah, <laughs> he literally like brought like he he's so obsessed with sticks that he brought one of his sticks to Texas to show pops yeah, Catherine's dad. <laughs> I got to show pops my stick that I have. And so <laughs> anyway, um, no, my family would have to be there and I would have to get in a lot better shape. I, I think I'd need a lot of training. Cause I hear that space is not great on your body. I think I'm not a space space or not. Um, space but, uh, that's a great question. I haven't thought too much about Sarah Flippo. Would you need sticks for Bo? Yeah, Bo would need sticks. You would, yeah. yeah, whatever my kids want, I would also, and yeah, I think I would need an assistant for my family because Catherine would, I, I, I haven't talked to her in detail about it, but Catherine says, hey, if we ever go out into space, I am going to need some help. Um, <laughs> and, and I think I just, I want one celebrity to come with me. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to be picky. I just want, like, if somebody says that guy's a celebrity, great, come with me. Kate come Blanchett. Space. Oh, fun. Jake Triplett. Jake Triplett. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if Jake came with me, it'd be a done deal for sure. That's fun. Uh, yeah, I had all that time to think of my answer and I, <laughs> I have no idea. That's a great question. I would say my initial thought is my family, Rachel's family and Rachel. And I think that would be a fun crew. And I'm trying to think like what Rachel would need. She would need like sunlight. She would need a lot sunlight of blankets, and yeah. she would need yeah, blankets. Go to a world. Do they have warm planets? Mm -hmm. that, that is how stupid I am with this. Yeah. The uh, sun, not a planet. Mercury. I know that much, right? Sun is a star, but like Mercury is like so close to the sun. Yeah. Hot. Hot. Can we go to Mercury. Okay. I also, I have to, if, if I'm going to space, I have to go to a place where you can play basketball, but with less gravity. on. That would you. be fun. That would be Any so fun. sport. Yeah. To feel that. So I'm going to need at least nine other people because my, my kids aren't very good at basketball yet. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Thanks, Flippo. Where are you at? Fun yeah. question. All right, Brandon. Hey, so I'm Brandon Faulkner. Um, I'm of from, Brandon's Coffee Corner. I'm from Tennessee, <laughs> yeah. of Brandon's Coffee Corner. Yeah. Um, long time podcast listener, first time voice memo. Heck yeah. <laughs> Live, baby. Um, so obviously you guys have, you have an awesome podcast. You've cultivated a really cool community. Keep talking. Uh, <laughs> well, and you've really like brought us together with F12 and now this. Uh, so I wanted to ask, when you initially started podcasting, where did you picture this going? Kind of mm. what did you have planned, if anything? And what did yeah. you kind of, I don't know, dream of it turning into? <laughs> good question. Really good question. I feel like the, the forethought that went into the podcast planning was like very minimal. It was just more of uh, a byproduct of my personality, which is like, hey, I want to give... I want to give everything a little bit of a try. Like, yeah. why not? I don't want to like think back like, hi, ah, I never started a podcast or any kind of like venture I wanted to do, like the limo road trip or, you know, whatever. So it was one of those things, like I was consuming podcasts, like that sounds kind of fun. I like to do my own. I think I'd like to be comedy. If there's one person I do it with, it would definitely be Brad. I didn't even give a thought of like doing it myself. It's like, I need it with someone else. Brad's a no brainer. 
was like, Brad, you want to start this podcast? He's like, I've never even listened to one, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy to think back. Yeah. You, know? you, never I know. Even listened, you didn't even know what we were doing, really. No. You're just like, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. Which is fun. And yeah, I don't think I had any idea for it ever to like make money or become any kind of community builder like this. I think it was just like a creative outlet and it was just like, just trying something. Yeah, totally. I would say I would agree with all that. I think I'm not much, I, I am a decent vision, vision-y guy. Like I, I like making goals. I like thinking for the future. Uh, I did not think anything <laughs> of our podcast when we started. I was just like, yeah, Jake wants to do it and it sounds fun. And what's the worst that can happen? Uh, but never did I imagine <laughs> we'd be hosting people in Florida for a vacation or, you know, even, even never did I imagine it would have a, an effect on people beyond just trying to make them laugh kind of thing. And so it's been cool to hear, you know, people say, you know, this part was funny or this part was funny, but so many people, it's just cool to hear like, Oh, like Courtney and Ben talking about like Courtney will show Ben like, Oh, Brad has some good parenting advice on this episode or something. I'm like, wow, that's cool. Didn't even know I had, I don't, when we started the podcast, I probably didn't have any parenting advice, honestly. Like, um, so it's just been cool to evolve within it. But yeah, I don't think we had any kind of foresight towards the future. Um, and, and frankly, I, I've probably said this before, but I don't think we would have been, well, I don't, I don't know how, how much I would have pushed for it to continue going, but I think Jake was so consistent and like, Hey, we should do this every Monday morning. We should do it. I was big on that. And it has to come out every Monday. And morning. I, I think if it were me, I would have been like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, this was fine, but that was a fun thing. And yeah, let's do it every once in a while or whatever. Um, but then once I realized like he's committed, I'll be like, I'll, I'll be committed with them. And then, yeah, we've just kind of taken it off from there. So and so much of it has been accidental too. Like even people like, they might just found us. They start listening. Like, I feel like there's like inside jokes you guys talk about, which makes me want to listen to the old episodes. Yeah. Like that is not on purpose. Like, right. Someone asks us one time, like, do you guys do that on purpose? So people will listen. So people to feel them. left out. It's like, we're not trying to make people <laughs> feel left out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're trying all, to do whatever. It's all on accident, which I think which you'd say it's all God. Cause absolutely. it always wasn't yeah. our own plans or anything. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. good question, Brandon. Thanks, Brandon. Also, shout out to Brandon's shirts, man. All week, oh, yeah. just... I, I did write that down. Never a dull moment, never a dull shirt, honestly. Yeah. I asked someone today, Taco like, Cat. do you think this is how Brandon always dresses, or is this like vacation Brandon? <laughs> and I'm I good like with vacation either. Brandon. I'm good with yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a vibe. All right, Kaylee. Hey, guys. I'm Kaylee Thompson. I'm from San Diego, uh, but I'm currently living in San Antonio. Hua. And uh, Yes. <laughs> yep. Hua. Uh, Two different questions, kind of similar for you both. So Brad, what is your favorite story to tell about being a dad? And Fun. then Jake, what is your favorite story to tell about dating and being engaged to Rachel? Fun. And then I have a follow-up question after that. Too. Fun. Oh, man. I don't even know if I have the right story yet, Namari, like tearing up, <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> There's just been some really like emotionally wonderful, like spiritual conversations and moments with my kids. Um, and that's like, Definitely that's the cool. most like uh, fulfilling thing within being a dad is just watching your kids grow to love Jesus and understand the gospel. And um, recently, I had a, just a wonderful conversation. I'm convinced that Kat, or that Hattie can preach the gospel to anybody. Honestly, <laughs> like it's wonderful. Um, so yeah, I'll stop there. But yeah, that's great. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> I am teary-eyed <laughs> trying to think of my Rachel own answer. Rachel and I cook some stuff every once in a while. It is fun. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, man. Um, I think for me, what I get excited about is when people ask, when did you know Rachel was the one? I love answering that question because, one, I have an exact answer. It's not like I have to like make something up or like figure something out. Um, and I've said it on the podcast, I'm sure before, but it's just, I, I knew Rachel was amazing. I thought she was like, I think, you know, I could see myself marrying this girl, but it was a month into dating. I went home with her family over Thanksgiving and just got to spend two and a half days with her family. And it was just like, oh my gosh, it, I mean, it's not, I've never been more sure about something in my life. Like <laughs> if this is who she came from and where she's headed, I want in on that, you know? And so, yeah, that was, I love to get to tell people that and just getting to brag on Rachel's family in general. That probably comes through the podcast. Just like, yeah. I mean, th three of her four family members were at my bachelor party. So, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, get them in here. I love talking to them. Yeah. I mean, we called Steve Coop on the podcast a couple weeks ago. Did you see the post about Tim the on Facebook? No. The Facebook group? Oh, it's like uh, Tim Coop at the casino. Or I don't know what it was. It was like, oh, we have we have tickets to the football game at the ten yard line, and then there's this guy like literally walking onto the football field or something <laughs> like that. And it's like Tim Cooper the casino. 
I was just talking about that trip to Thanksgiving because I remember checking your find my iPhone location and it said you were in Waterloo, Iowa. And I was like, wow, he flew from Springfield to Waterloo to like see her. And I was like, he loves her. Like he's, he's, he's in. I think Catherine was like, she's the one. Yeah. Yeah. At that point. So it's easy. It's fun. Fun question. Thanks for making okay. follow up. Fun, quick question. Uh, what cereal should I try next? That's going to yes. be oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Did we talk about Kaylee on the podcast leading up to it? I don't know. I put um, it on the story. Okay. Yeah. Because we were like, I remember I was like, oh, we got to make sure that people are going to, you know, handle their alcohol responsibly and everything. And we had this like initial Zoom call with people. And Kaylee was like, yeah, I'm really excited to like try some sugary cereal I never got to try as a kid. And I was like, I think we're going to do just fine with alcohol on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> and so you tried Cinnamon Toast Crunch? You liked it? It was delightful. I, a, yes. Scale 1 to 10? Oh, 11. I, I know, yeah. right? Yeah, that's good. So good. The milk afterwards was okay. a nice treat. I heard the exact quote after like a few bites in. It was, I see why people eat this. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that such like, yeah, any kind of vice? You're like, I can see why people get into this. <laughs> you know? I'm addicted to this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what cereal next? Um... I mean, how truly like elementary are you with cereal? Have you had Cocoa Puffs? It's no. It's like hardly anything. No yeah, Cocoa she's Puffs. like, the craziest she got was like Honey Nut Cheerios. Yeah, I think. Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> yeah. Some Kicks, Life. Rice Krispie Treats was like a, I mean, not treats, but like Rice, Rice Krispies. Krispies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maybe no, a little no bit sugar. of sugar on oh, okay, there, okay. maybe. That was a wild day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think Cocoa Pebbles would be a nice, safe okay. bet for yeah, your next yeah, one. Cocoa Pebbles are good. My personal next favorite is Honey Bunches of Oats, which we have here at the house. So okay. if you want to try those, those are great too. I'm going to say Lucky Charms. You take okay. a just a spoonful of marshmallows. Yes. Like, wow. Oh, yeah. This is good so for no. me. Okay. Absolutely. Awesome. Yeah. That's a good word. Thank you, Kaylee. Fun questions, <laughs> Kaylee. Buzz, 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 buzz. Brad, what, what are you interrupting the voice memos for? I'm... <laughs> I don't know if you heard, Jake, <laughs> but that was me buzzing. It's kind of gross to look at. <laughs> For beans. <laughs> <laughs> you are buzzing. We've been buzzing all week. We're oh, buzzing boy, now. Oh, have we. Yeah. It was uh, at the end of the Florida trip. I feel like we had... Uh, you know, we had Main Street Roasters yep. to, to give away, and they did not last long on the no, giveaway not, table. Brother, no, it did not. Uh, shout out to Main Street Roasters. They are a sponsor of today's podcast. They were a sponsor of the Ghost Runners getaway trip, and man, were they awesome. They sent us so much stuff. They uh, gave us so many grounds, so many beans, gift cards, everything. They are wonderful. They're a wonderful company, and we want you to support them like they support us. That's right. Uh, you can check them out if you're curious. It, you know, they got an Instagram. Main Street Roasters. Really? They got a Facebook, Main Street Roasters. Yep. They have a URL that they own, mm -hmm. MainStreetRoasters.com. Yes. You can get beans. You can get cups. You can get mugs. You can get t-shirts. Do all four? I dare you. Grand Slam it. Grand Slam that bad boy all the way to MainStreetRoasters.com. Comment on their Facebook. You know what? I always appreciate when people review me on Facebook because it helps with Ooh. everything. So there you go. write something nice about Main Street Roasters. Tell them that we sent you there. And uh, how about how about a little discount? How about a little ten percent off discount why while not? you're at it? Hey, why not? GRKC is the coupon code. So uh, just remember it by <laughs> goodness, man. <laughs> How about you just remember by Ghost Runners Kansas City? <laughs> I can't think of anything. I was like, Ghost Runners at the beginning, coffee oh, at oh. the end. <laughs> what is in the middle? Uh, good, real, kind coffee. Coffee. 10% off. Yeah. MainStreetRoasters.com. Freshest, most flavorful cup around. Yeah. Just buy it and smell it. Love you, Main Street Roasters. Didn't drink it. Yep. Okay, let's get back to the voice memos. Buzz, 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 buzz. All right, next up. Meow, meow. Uh, jump, yeah. meow, jump, I would jump, have to introduce meow. myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, currently living most recently in Reno, um, but from all over. Um, I have a hard time following Kaylee's deep questions because I wanted <laughs> to ask, hypothetical situation, how many pigeons would mm -hmm. have to show up in your house before you started getting suspicious someone was planting them there? Good question. <laughs> all right, let me think. <laughs> One, Rachel left the door open. Mm -hmm. Uh, even like four or five, I'd be like, oh yeah, Rachel left the door open all day and they're like starting like a family here. <laughs> I think uh, it would have to be like... Oh, a lot. <laughs> it would have been. Planting, like it, I, I keep thinking like there's something in our house that's attracting these pigeons. I would not think somebody's doing this to me. 
I would be like, I guess they like we might have mold or something, and pigeons are. Attra- I would be like googling like pigeons mold, you know, <laughs> <laughs> basements, <laughs> Kansas pigeons. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's where I'm finding them, like mm. finding them like in a duffel bag in a closet. And like, all right, <laughs> someone is like putting the pigeons here. Fair, fair question. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think it's more location based. But what if they're just out in the open? How many would it take for you to be like, this is, <laughs> this is an inside it would, job? It would take a lot. I yeah, know. I think it was the pigeon's behavior. Yeah. I don't know pigeons that well. Yeah, they I just, know that a homing pigeon is a thing. What, home. Yeah, I mean, that pigeon, makes sense. They go to homes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> think I got a pity laugh or a really delayed laugh? Huh. Yeah, good Courtney try. was talking about how she really likes puns, so that's that makes. Oh, sense. so it's probably a genuine laugh. Yeah. Just a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A thousand is my answer. A thousand? A thousand. Do you know how much space a thousand, <laughs> a thousand pigeons, pigeons takes? But you up? know what? If if there's more than four pigeons in my house, I'm moving. I guarantee you. <laughs> I would be terrified. A bird in my house, I would be terrified of. There was a bird a, a few times in my shop. One time, I think I posted on Patreon way back in the day. I killed this bird. And it, was, <laughs> it was a hummingbird. It was a sweet bird. And I was trying to get it out. And I like flung it towards the door. And instead of going into the door, it went up into this wall and just nailed it. And I killed this hummingbird. So um, You got to think too. And honestly, have- I was a little relieved to find that it was dead <laughs> because it was scary. If you have a thousand pigeons in your home, Bo is killed. 40 of them. Yeah, that's true. Stick. Bo is fearless with those things. We yeah. went on a, a walk the other day in Texas before the day before we left for Florida. The three of us, or four of us, Rosie, Hattie, Bo, and I, and these like wild, wild dogs. They weren't wild. They're in the country. Um, <laughs> they didn't have collars. <laughs> do, do country got dogs always have collars? Whatever. They, they didn't seem like they were in their home. And I told Hattie, I was like, Hattie, just, just act like a tree. And she just stood there. And Bo had his stick and he was like, get out of here, dogs. <laughs> And so I, yeah, he would whack some pigeons. Wasn't he sure. one too? Like there was a mouse in your pantry, and Bo was like, oh, "Let's go find it." Yeah, Dad, there's a mouse. There's a mouse in there. I was like, "Don't touch it." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's fun. That's a good point. Are you next up? No, no one's no one's up. Okay. 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 Oh, here we go. The doctor's wife is coming to the stage. All right. What do you got? Do I need to introduce myself? Please, please, please. Hi, I am Courtney Miller, also known as Mrs. Dr. Miller. <laughs> um, no, just kidding. We are from Albany, Georgia, so like three hours from here. But um, okay, based on conditions from yesterday, would you rather spend an hour in that riptide deep in the waves oh. or an hour prime UV time without sunscreen on top of your current sunburns? Oh. <laughs> Could you die from the second one? Because you could die from the first one. Yeah, what? (laughs) Okay, we got death death in both. Let's just say you don't die, but you're either extremely exhausted and beat up, or you're just very burnt. If I don't die, I would take the first one, but I think I'm more likely to die from the first one. But you're not dying, no matter what. So I yeah, agree. If I'm not dying, I'll, I'll, I'll swim. But let's say you had a decent meal and you don't get hungry in the waves. Because yesterday I was really hungry and I was like, <laughs> I gotta get out. <laughs> it was too much exercise on an empty stomach. <laughs> Courtney ran through this as she was falling asleep last night. She's like, I was basically there for one of them. No, it's, it's, it's the waves for me too. I agree. I think, I think I can find enough buoyancy to like try to, <laughs> try to get over them. Or like dive into them, you know. That's a, that's a fun one. You're just like, here they come. I dove into it. It is kind of fun. Um, I think I can do that but for, for an, an hour. hour straight. For an hour, yeah. I bet Daniel and I. How many? You think we're 20 minutes in there yesterday? And we were very tired. That's but only a third of the time. <laughs> what do you say? It's only a third of the time. I understand how it works. Yes. <laughs> um, no, not necessarily tread water, oh. but not where you're like standing and just like you're battling it against your knees. Like you're having to like. Man, I'm tumbling, get back out there. <laughs> yeah, I just I can't imagine. I got I got, you know, probably a eight eight out of ten burn yesterday, so I can't imagine taking that to fourteen. <laughs> you know? Like it was it was rough. So I, I, I had a hard time sleeping, you know, last night because every time I moved around it was like, you know, wrinkling the skin a little bit. And oh. I was like, ah, <laughs> ah <laughs> you know? So I would not want to have fourteen. Yeah. Give me the ocean. Yes. Give me the ocean. Or Fun give question, me though. Death. It's a little puzzling. Thank for a while. you for your time. Yes. Yeah. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you for your time. 
Patrick, Anybody you got else? one or are you just no, sitting there? I'm just sitting here. Yeah, just sitting there. <laughs> cool. Okay, cool. Solid then. Thanks for all your questions. Yes. Thanks for if you've ever sent one in, you know, on the podcast. The, How many the of you have had a voice memo answered on the podcast? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Review. Oh yeah. How many of you have had one that you've sent in that we have not answered? Oh, okay. If you <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. I got I got in trouble from Courtney last night because I didn't answer her DM uh, one time. Ghost first. Oh. And it was a good one too. I was felt it? Bad. Yeah. I should just go back and see like DMs from people and see like what we've talked about. Yeah. That'd be fun. It would be fun. Well, so. it wasn't answered, so you didn't talk about anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah it yeah, might yeah, have been yeah. a one way conversation. Not that one, yeah. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. Okay. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you guys for yeah, being here with us. It's felt so fun. Thanks for doing it. You're welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out ghosties. Ooh. Cool. Fun. All right. All right. Well, thank you, ghosties. We are, have now been transed back to the future. <laughs> oh, have you heard of that? There's a movie that it's called Back to the Future. Oh, I, I really got you. <laughs> Dude, have you seen Michael J. Dude, Fox? No, like it's like a huge movie. Trans to the future. Yeah. They're making a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Set the DeLorean to 2023. <laughs> We're going trans. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks to, you know what? Thanks to you for listening to all that yeah. just now. Appreciate it. We're mm-hmm. at the, the end of the episode, so we're going to do our, our win of the week, because it is Wednesday after all, and our YouTube comment of the week. Brad, what's your win of the week? Uh, I have a few wins of the week. Uh, first off, just shout out once again for the sponsors of Florida. That was mm. a huge win for every aspect. Uh, we got to show off how good good ranchers, Main Street Roasters, Chike, CGLA, uh, Vulcan Pickleball, Vulcan Pickleball, just how good of products they have. And we just got to, yeah, it, it alleviated a lot of the stress and the pressure off of us uh, budget-wise. I mean, they just helped out in so many ways. Yeah. So shout out to them. That's a huge win, getting those people you know, to support us. <clears throat> Second one of the week was actually post vacation. Um, coming back and reuniting with my kids was like mm. so fun. Like they were so hyped up to see us. It was like, like I can't imagine how like those soldiers feel when they come back from war yeah. because I came back from six days on the beach or whatever, <laughs> and the kids just loved me and were so excited. Like it was like, it, like Bo looked almost incredulous. Like he was just like, "You're here! Like you're you're here!" Is and Hattie, as I was putting her to bed, I was like, "We're going home tomorrow," and she's like, "I know." And the best part is i get to be in the car with you all day dad wow. and i was like that is i can't it's a, like a picture of heaven almost I, like when I, we yeah. get there what our father will look at us oh man it was it was amazing and she was like it was it was wonderful and i i was expecting her to be like i'm gonna miss texas and she was like i'm just so excited to be with you and i was like cool wow that's awesome um so win of the week was just my kids still love me and our sponsors love us too so Win of the week. Good win of the week. My win of the week is also going to be shortly after the trip got over with, um, where you started a little something, where you st- were in the car and you started throwing out some gifts. Yes. And it was so fun. Yeah, it, it was so fun. It was just basically, you know, we'd all spent, 30 of us just spent all week together, have a ton of inside jokes. And so what Brad starts doing is sending a different office gift for like, you know, Sarah Flippo went on the cruise, uh-huh. this gift or yeah. whatever. He rattles, rattles off like 10 of them. They're all hilarious. I love them. And then everyone else starts joining in, and everyone really starts joining in. And they were all funny. Everyone did a good job. Do you think they we had great. 100? I bet we had a close to 100 gifts. I bet gifts. we had close to 100 gifts. And none of them were like, okay, that's that's a curve. You know, uh, no <laughs> flops. Yeah. What, or what's like an easy one? Like that's a... Layup? That's a chain. Yeah, whatever. Fat, whatever. Flop. Yeah, layup. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, there were no like two seam fastballs in there. No, yeah, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying that's a that's a gimme. Well, I don't know what the thing is. Anyway, yeah, What's they were all stimping? like really good, like clever. Yeah, like so funny to the point. I was like, did you look at a gift first and then try to find a situation that I did? I did both for me. Yeah. Did what was your favorite one of mine? Did you? Can you think? Uh, off I can't think of it off the top of your head, my head. But my I like favorite one was uh, two tickets to paradise for John and Lindsay here. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, that was because uh, like the way he's like doing the two tickets. Anyway, um, yeah, that's my one of the cool. week. Just you know, the trip was already so fun, and then us just. You know, going back over all the inside jokes was it's, great. It's fun to have that group meet. Yeah, it's still popping. So. Yeah. Um, cool. My YouTube comment of the week uh, comes from our this past Monday's uh, episode. And I think just, you know, with all of us being in a house together, vacation, just a comment from Jonathan Hausler says, Mr. Beast could never. Oh, I saw that. This is awesome, guys. Yeah. I just love that comment. 
It was just funny because it does, if you word it the right way, it does sound like a Mr. Beast video. Like, I flew out 30 of my fans <laughs> to the yeah. beach in Seaside. You yeah, know, I, I went on vacation with my biggest fans. I mean, that's, that's like the, that's, I don't know. I don't want to brag on ourselves or the podcast too much, but that is like one of the most, it's, it's so unique that we can do this. Like, cause there is truth in that. Mr. Beast truly could not do it. Jensen, our friend, our friend, the guy that came on the trip, who's now our friend, like he's yeah. genuinely like <laughs> just, yeah, he's our friend. He asked like, Hey, what podcast would you go to a vacation like this for? And I thought about, it, I was like, none of them. I would, yeah, I don't feel it's connected the enough. Same, or, yeah. or it would be a bunch of like, like, you know, one of the podcasts I like is decently like vulgar at times. And I'm like, I wouldn't want to go on a trip with people like, like, it was just like, I don't know. I, and I don't think that's, I think that's, you know, whatever, 15% Jake and Brad, 85% the people that listen who have formed this podcast into what it is. And it's just so fun to be so confident of like, yeah, we can do this thing and it's going to go really well because the people are listening and they, yeah. so anyway, um, so my comment of the week is actually a caption from Instagram from Celia M. Oh, O'Brien. Oh, I knew I had to. I'm glad you're doing it. It's it was so awesome. Good. I'm glad you're doing this. And, and for the record, probably five people wrote similar awesome posts. And so whatever. Shout out to all of you guys. But this is the one that got me in my feels the quickest and everything. So Celia M. O'Brien on Instagram said, A lot of us use podcasts to fill up the blank space in our day or to distract us from the busyness of our own minds. <clears throat> The Ghost Runners podcast brings a sense of enrichment to the lives of those who listen. The simple concept of sharing their milestones, their friendships, families, and their faith with people who chose to listen to the pod has brought joy to our days, a unique sense of community into our lives, and has been an avenue to build strong friendships that will last longer than you could probably guess. I'm thankful to the Lord for providing this cheerful corner of the internet and allowing it to pour into our lives. Love you guys. So, so Celia. Just a, just a nice... Nice couple sentences there. Have her write some lyrics Absolutely. for us. Yeah, Celia is awesome. She I had so much Kansas fun City. with her. Yeah, she's moving to Kansas City this summer, I think. She taught me some good things about coffee. Cool. I'm a I'm a iced cortado guy. Iced cortar. Try it out, guys. If you want the right ratio of coffee to milk, but not too much espresso. Nice. Also, with your mainstream roasters. Now that we're in the f- final thirty seconds of the podcast, probably time to address uh, that this oh, yeah. has been here the whole time. Um, they all got us this fun beachy towel and signed mm-hmm. their names on it. Yes. It's really cool. Uh, we're going to hang it up here, but um, I have too much trust in tape. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll learn. Uh, yeah. No, no, no. Hey, tr- trust tape. <laughs> have the childlike faith for some tape. <laughs> I'll learn. <laughs> um, okay. Well, this was Wednesday. It was a fun one. Yeah. Vibes are high. We'll see you guys Monday and hope you have a good weekend. Yeah. Check out some Tight Moon too. <laughs> yeah. Love you guys. It's CGLA. And MazerRosers.com. Love you guys. Thanks a lot. See ya.